Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. <coughs> what I wanted to show you today is this. Some of you may not be fam familiar with this part. This is the carbon brush holder for uh, a Mexican beetle alternator, Bosch alternator. This is the actual holder that was on my car. And uh, this other one is the Bosch part I ordered from uh, Mexico, from a very reputable seller. It does have the Bosch logo. It doesn't have the Bosch logo on the brushes, so I think it may be a factory or a manufactured unit, but its construction it's of course a bit different because there are 20 years of difference in the manufacturings of two, these two things. You can see for example here how this is pressed in and on the other hand on this one we have a hollow rivet. But functionally they are the same. You say why exchange this, this article <coughs> because of this. Now, when you first start the car, the light, the generator light on your dashboard will light up. And it will light up because it receives power from the battery. The power goes through here, this contact, and reaches the brushes and goes to hurt to ground through the alternator coils. Now, if these brushes are too short, they don't make good contact and the springs can become uh, weak so that it may happen that, for example, you turn the key and you have no alternator light. Okay, no big deal. Well, actually yes, big deal, because the alternator doesn't have a magnetic core like a dynamo, so it needs field current to create the magnetic field in the coils and for that this contact is used. When the uh, alternator starts spinning power is produced and fed back into this same contact among the less and uh, so this contact gets 12 volts which is the same as the battery and so the light goes down. Now if you start the car without the light having been on, your alternator is not, is not going to charge. If you go and test with a voltmeter, you will find that uh, uh, the voltage is all over the place. Anyway, how I did uh, uh, understand that this was my issue? I understood that because the issue was uh, only at uh, low RPM, ideally at idle, and it was uh, very vibration sensitive. Meaning, if I was working on the engine and moving the engine, for example, uh, hanging myself onto the bumper and such, the problem tended to appear. If I tried to accelerate and so the engine moves slightly sideways, the problem tended to appear. And when did the problem tend to disappear? If I went atop the uh, alternator and push it this plate. So to prove this point I ordered from Antonio Trejo in Mexico two of these replacement brushes so now this is my spare one and replaced my old brushes. What I saw immediately when I uh, undid the screw that hold this to the alternator body was that uh, uh, it didn't have any push left. Ideally you have here a, a slip contact and here the push contact so that in the moment you free the free machine screws here this plate should slightly pop up. This does it when well, it's sister this doesn't. I had to pry it off. Once this plate is off, you have to disconnect the uh, voltage regulator cables 
one connector here, one connector here. They are different sizes, so it is impossible to mix them up. Put it away. Take the new one. The one I put on, I removed the sticker. This is the Bosch sticker. Uh, wasn't there in the original one, and I put it on the box to remind me that I made the change. And this goes in really simple. You have just to remake the contact, which of course on these new uh, new terminals is quite easier and you have to slide it and you have to feel it contact the spring inside it's very simple once it's, in, once it's in place it will pop up and so you have to hold it with your finger and at the same time that you hold it down with your finger just as light as pressure you screw the free screws so that it's blocked but not locked when it's flat, you give a final quarter turn to each screw, and it's okay in its place. And after replacing this item, my problem disappeared. No more erratic uh, alternator light, no more uh, issues if I had to move the engine or do a sudden burst of acceleration and such. So this one, goes in the box, spares box. This is the part number, if you are interested, is a Bosch part number. Uh, I think again Antonio Trejo has them in stock, but maybe you will be able to find them elsewhere. In Europe I couldn't find it anywhere, but I did find something in, in Europe, and that was, and that was this. This I bought from uh, an online vendor, a French online vendor. This is a, a remanufacturing kit for this. Basically, you have to access to uh, the solder, which is a solder that also slips away all the uh, tin. And you have to desolder the two cable terminals, one here and the other one here and to slip the old brushes out and substitute the new brushes with new insulating sleeves and new springs. Now this is a job unfortunately I'm not able to do at home but I have a friend who has access to such equipment so I'm going in the next day to ask him to refurbish this one. As you can see the consumption doesn't seem too much it's there is still uh, space left for it to move but if you measure the space that is between the plate where it mounts and the commutator rings or better the slip rings you will see that half a centimeter which is bit around the depth of this one is really the maximum you can allow the carbon to uh, to wear out. If the carbon is worn like this, it will still charge, but it will give that sort of erratic issues I described. So you are going around, you take a bump, or your engine uh, changes uh, its revs uh, rapidly, and the belt slips, and so the contact is momentarily lost, the vibration can make the contact momentarily lost, a change of speed in the rotor make, can make the contact momentarily lost, and you will see a drop in voltage and, and a bad charge, basically. Now, how, last thing, how did I rule out my uh, ignition switch as a source of a problem? Well, that's quite simple, because my oil light always was working. What was not working were this one and the brake warning light. Because since the brake warning light is drawn up to be uh, equalized by the alternator voltage, the battery voltage, it comes up together with the alternator light when you turn the key. That's the test function. So when they both 
fail the test function, both the alternator light and the brake light, but not the oil light, you have to switch for your suspects from the ignition, which is your prime suspect nonetheless, to the alternator. And this erratic behavior is very easily explainable by this. It may be due to a bad voltage regulator, but voltage regulators are solid state components and they are not really subject to wear unless they go bad. This is worn. It must be replaced in order to work. Only thing I'm sorry is these brushes, eh, probably you won't be able to see it, but these brushes have a, a Bosch imprinted inside. The new ones, of course, doesn't because they are aftermarket. So, keep an eye on this. To remove this is five minute job. You remove the air filter, uh, you disconnect the battery, you remove the uh, main terminal from the alternator, you remove the signal light from the alternator, undo the screws and you are in. And everything just starts from there. So, hope you enjoyed this video and uh, see you next time.